What's up guys, this is Jay and Scott, Revolution Radio. So we have a lot to get into today. We're going to talk about the military and how about a third of them are refusing the COVID-19 vaccinations. We want to talk about infrastructure and debt. And we also want to talk about um, Joe Rogan having a Crenshaw and as we uh, on his show. I think it was Wednesday? But that actually led uh, to some very interesting um, conversation by him that I would kind of like to critique a little bit. Uh, but first, um, I'd like to start with an update on Matt Gates and how the Matt Gates situation just keeps getting worse for Matt Gates. Uh, we found out on Thursday night that uh, his, one of his his highest staffers is probably his biggest advisor slash kind of assistant. They walked out on him. And then Friday, we found out that Matt Gates has preemptively asked Trump. Oh, just get me on a free jail card. Yeah, what does that say? You're not going to get out of that one. Yeah. Hand me one of those. And by the way, at the time, Trump wasn't handing that out to anybody. So it wasn't like he was just standing in line. No, like it kind of almost even shows potentially why Matt Gates, towards the end there, was even saying that he was going to give up his seat to go help to stop the steel fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is something I, else I, like... I can't believe he had the audacity that, to that, go ask for that. Can I have a get-out-of-jail-free card, Trump, please? That came up, like, honestly, I want to say late November that he was willing to step down from his seat so he could help to stop the steal. And I think that was one of those situations where people are like, well, that's weird, but didn't even think about it. And now it's like, oh, he was really yeah. trying to overextend oh, yeah. himself, right? took that $900 and paid three women for sexual relations. And, you know, just one of many, many stories that keeps coming down. Um, a anonymous congressman, which we have to assume is a Republican, said that on the Senate floor, Matt Gates was showing them pictures and videos of his conquests. <laughs> in his time in Florida, apparently Matt Gates. And uh, a few of the other kind of bro Republican guys down there, they had a game where they tried to score as many points by banging women. And in fact, there was one who's kind of an uptight, you know, higher up ranking um, official. And she was what they called the Quidditch, because if you're able to bang her, you won the game. Like, these are just all these stories coming out about <laughs> Matt Gates, And you're like, Jesus Christ, it's like family first kind of, it went, oh, he's so gross. <laughs> and at the same time, they incorporated a Harry Potter phrase into it. Oh, Lord. It's awful. Like, and again, like if he was just some college bro, the problem is, dude, it's he's between our ages. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. call me. You're old. What are you doing? I've definitely partied balls when I was younger, but I got it out of my system to where I'm like, those guys must be like, you know, trying to sow their oats for some reason. They didn't do it when they were younger or the social club that they sit in. They must continually reaffirm their uh, testosterone, you know, because for whatever reason, they think they have low testosterone. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is. And I think maybe, yeah, I think maybe he, he got out of high school and he just was that, that frat kind of guy in college and then just never grew up. And was he like, is this kind is of how goofy to... looking, though. I'm, I mean, his older pictures, he's got a, a fatter face. He just looks depressed and old now. Oh, you could, I mean, you could land a Blackhawk helicopter on his forehead. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like if you if you're out in the in the in a you know during a rainy day, you could stand underneath his eyebrows and you'd be safe. 
Yeah, that I mean, he's a very Neanderthal. I mean, kid. he's not he's not hideous, but he definitely there's something there that just says he wasn't any good at picking up women. Hey, baby, you want to go back to my pad? No, I, I, by the I, White House. And I think it was just his political power that gave him that ability. Because oh, yeah, of I mean, course, of he course. he kind of looks like an uglier version of um well i guess the carolina panthers new quarterback sam darnold and that guy <laughs> is not attractive like but <laughs> even you know there, there's even excerpts of his book the matt gates's book not sam darnold <laughs> where matt gates goes in to talk about um he's heading into dc and this is where everyone's in either a spy or a hooker and he notes in this book that, well, this just means I have to be more careful, which is fair, but he says, at covering up what I do. Like, he said it in his book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I can't think of what I would have to cover up, but I just, I don't understand why that career choice brings pressures within that aren't that tough to resist for us everyday folk that... It you know have pretty much a lot of the same problems, but I just I don't get it. I, I go I still think it's the Bohemian Grove. <laughs> you know, I think I think you know yeah there, there there's something to and I also I think you know that, what's the old saying that um it, to be a successful politician you have to either be a sociopath or you have to have ran out of options. And yeah, I, and I think the sociopath know, is more likely. And I think, well, yeah, because I think you have, like, some guys who, who fall into that ran out of options. Richard Ojeda is a good example of someone I think ran out of options. You know, he's done everything for his community, fought in the military, saw West Virginia just go to hell with um, painkillers and, and addicts and people dying by the thousands. And so he ran for office, and he really, really interesting, cool guy. That's a guy who ran out of options. Majority of them, 80, 90, 95% of them, yeah, they're sociopaths. They they believe they have some sort of power over people. They should be this ordained position, you know. And, and so I think, you know, along with that comes the drugs, the alcohol, the, you know, the yeah, women. Yeah, and it's easy for sociopaths to, which, by the way, a lot of you, it's like they don't experience emotion and emotional connections like the rest of us. So if you're asking, well, how could he cheat on his beautiful wife with all his kids? They don't love them. Yeah, they don't they care. Aren't, they aren't capable of the same kind of feelings that you and I are. And it does not make them more logical. In fact, it makes them more experimental for the sheer fact that it's kind of like, you know, doing ecstasy. The first time's great. Second time's great. But as you start to continue, <laughs> body, your body builds up tolerance and you lose the, the natural, uh, well, what is it? The Not endorphins, but the the release that you get from your brain uh, that makes it feel good. And it's in for, it's, it's just like watching an episode of Dexter, you know, it's the same deal. Before, you know, he, before you know it, you're I mean, popping really. it up your butt and yeah, no. And I think, you know, but you have to have that in a little bit, you know, like I could never be a president for instance, like, you know, I would want to save everybody. Yeah. I would want, you know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't make that decision. I'm saying, well, we need to bomb, blah, blah, blah. You know, we need to cut, you know, um, social, you know, assistance for people. I couldn't sleep with myself knowing that there's a family who is now getting less because I had to make that decision. Like, so I think in a way you have to be that, maybe. I don't know. I guess, I don't even know if you have to do that stuff, to be honest. But I'm sure that there are those situations where you have to make hard decisions. And you can't let it affect you because you got to keep moving, you know. Um, but there again, I think you also have that word, like that id, just like Uber rules who they are. And Matt Gates is definitely one of those guys who, like, he's fed into this, like, almost greater than Jesus kind of, you know, image he's built up for himself. So the fact that he yeah thinks, becoming you know, a hero politician instead of is. an efficient politician or an honest one yeah yeah I mean so yeah he just fills it with hookers and coke and, and feels like oh that's his right and I you know there's something else too that um, now you were bringing it up before but uh, I think it kind of leads into 
one of the questions I think that we all ask ourselves, especially when it comes to like people of power, or right? it's like, why are they screwing around with like young girls? Like if I could bone anyone, it would be like porn stars and stuff. Like I want to be with someone who's good at it. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I'm not going, you know, like Dude, I, I, I don't well, want to teach well, people how to. Aspect, it's like how many single soccer moms or, you know, it's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I... And, and they don't, they don't uh, talk, you know, behind your back about driving them across state lines because they probably drove your ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would I just, definitely, I, I, I would be it. all, all about that. Like, I, I you know, but I, I like a woman, like a real woman. I the, like the fucking, you know, uh, quick sidebar. But you know that uh, uh, cash me outside girl, the bad baby. Yeah. Six hours after turning eighteen, her my or her only fans made six no four million dollars. Yeah, that yeah, that, like that, that disturbs me. That about tells society. you how disgusting. And I might be wrong about the. I know it was at least a million, and I might be messing up some times because I kind of saw that. I'm just, sure you're not. Just reading it made me feel gross, but uh, you know, like and that that I'm not I'm not one of those weird dudes who's like into young girls. It's creepy, but. To go back to the Gates thing real quick before we move on, um, I was listening to a, an interview of R. Kelly, and this was years and years ago, and he had said, and I think this is what, I, you know, why we think, like, to go back to this real quick, you know, why do these people in power want to have sex with, like, these young girls and young people and whatever, and he said, you know, you can get anyone you want, you want it to start to become a chase again. And it's harder to get people that you're not supposed to be with. That and like it kind of makes sense, like logically. You're like, I, I mean, I it's not where I'm at, but it, it seems like yeah, because they what it is is they consider themselves so much of a king or a queen that they're they've gone over to the not supposed to touch you know category, and that's that's that says so much about them, honestly, because it's they weren't were in, really interested. It's kind of like why, in a lot of ways, you hear like rapists are are really more. It's in, they're into the violence. They're not into the sex. You know, some of them can't even get it up. It's like they're there to rape for the violence reason. They're they're addicted to the violence, and that seems like what you're doing here. Maybe it's like you said, it's chase. It's not actually the relationship or the sex that they're even looking for. It's the conquest. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know. I don't know. I'm not, you know, I, I can't throw Matt Gates down that hallway, but um, it mirrors a lot of that, I think. Yeah. That, uh, we, we, once again, we need to expect better. 